welcome to my channel. Let's get crafting. Here are the three items we are going to be making today. And up first, we're going to be doing this bunny. I had this little bunny figurine sitting inside my craft room stash for about a month. And I'm just going to take some rope and wrap it around him to create a really cute farmhouse coastal look for springtime. The thing I love about this is that it's really easy to do. You're just simply taking your rope and you're just wrapping it around and around and around. It does get a little bit trickier up by his ears and the top of his head, but I'm going to show you all how I did that part. And again, it's really simple. So here's the thing, friends. We as DIYers have come together. I'm going to show you who everyone is in just a moment, but me and a bunch of friends have been coordinated together by Yami the Latina next door and she is encouraging all of us to use up our stash inside our home because we are being counseled to not go outside, to help not spread things more, to help our community get healthy and strong again. And so today we're going to be using me and some other friends. We're going to be using the things that we have sitting around in our craft rooms that we haven't used yet. And the thing about us DIYers here on YouTube, we pick up a lot of things that we think, oh, that could be really cute, but sometimes we don't ever get around to making things. And we have a lot of things left over after each season. So I'm using up this little bunny. I've been wanting to use it for a long time and I just kept putting it off. And today I thought would be a really great day to be able to share this little bunny. So here I am, I'm getting closer up to his neck and as I'm getting tighter and tighter, I stop at his neck and then start at the top of him to go down and meet towards his neck. That way so you don't see any weird seams. So here's what I did for his ear. I unraveled the end of the rope just a little bit, went over the arch of his ear Ear, brought back the rope, hot glued it, and then started wrapping and coiling around that way. And then I did one ear and stopped, and then did the other ear and stopped. This is how you get that look without it looking too crazy at the end where you're trying to figure out how to rope it and it's slipping and moving. So you can see here that I've gotten it to stay nice and snug and secure at the top. And now I'm just going to continue to wrap all the way down and around to the bottom of his ear. And then when I get to the bottom of his ear, I'm going to cut my rope because I want to be able to help camouflage the space between the ears. You can't really wrap around in a circle up there. So I like to take the rope and I'm fraying it out to help cover up all that blue, as you can see I'm doing here. And then if it gets a little tricky with the hot glue, you just take a popsicle stick and you press that down. So you can see here that I have a lot of that space in between filled up by spreading out that rope. And now I'm going to move over to the other ear and I'm going to repeat the exact same process. I'm going to just keep coiling around until I get down to his head. And then once I get all the way down there, I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm going to flare out or, you know, unweave that rope and then I'm gonna glue it down onto the head to cover up even more blue. Now, if you still have some blue that is still exposed, you can take another piece of rope and fray it all out and then glue that in there as well to help camouflage even more of that blue so you don't see it. Basically, the space between his ears, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're covering it up with rope. So you can do that by, like I said, spreading the rope out and then gluing it into those spots. Then once you've got that, you're going to wrap around the bunny's head. It's the same thing as the bottom. Add on a bow. I guess at this point the bunny became a girl because it's got a girl bow. And if you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button with the notification bell so you don't miss any other videos coming up. One last thing I wanted to do for this bunny, I wanted to give it a tail because things just don't feel complete without a tail on a bunny. I don't know why I love putting tails on these little bunnies. So I went ahead and just took some yarn, wrapped it around my four fingers, tied a knot in the middle, cut the loops, and now I'm just giving it a little haircut as you see here. And you just keep fluffing it, flattening it, cutting it, and then fluffing it until you've completed a cute little ball as you can see here. And then one last thing I like to do is I like to fluff it just a little bit more by rubbing my hands all over it to create that friction. And then I'm going to take some hot glue and hot glue the bunny's tail right down onto it. 
Like I said earlier, Yami from the Latina Next Door has put together this collab where we craft our stash. We're gonna be using up the things that we have in our craft room. These are all the lovely ladies that are playing along. You will love all of them. They are all dear friends to me. I'm gonna link the playlist down below so you can check out all of their channels and see all of their goodies they're making from their craft stash. The next project we're gonna be moving on to has these supplies. Now this project is a little more labor intense, but I promise the results are gonna be so cute. Today we're gonna to be making a calendar bunny or an advent calendar. I love advent calendars. If you've been here for a while, you will know that I really, really love advent calendars. I love making them. Now I know there's this big debate about whether or not we should be celebrating with bunnies, but I do have kids. And so while I am a super religious person and I do love putting up a lot of decor about the savior, I do also really love to bring in a little bit of bunny here and there for the springtime because I feel that it is just so sweet and I love bunnies. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these two signs that you saw me start with from the Dollar Tree that I've had in my stash and I'm just going to cover them with some burlap to give them texture on the front plus it allows me to have a nice clean side on the back of the bunny and it allows me to have a nice texture on the front. So now that I've got those covered with burlap, I'm gonna take my staple gun. If you don't have a staple gun in your stash, this is definitely a tool to have. I use this thing all the time and it really helps secure your project so they're nice and sturdy. Once I took a painter stick and stapled that down, I went ahead and got some paint and painted the bunny all over the fabric. Now I'm gonna take this sign that I've had in my craft stash for several months and I'm cutting it down so that they're one and a half by one and a half blocks and I'm putting them on opposite sides of the bunny base to allow it to be able to stand up. Now to make it even more secure, you're gonna take a screw and you're going to just drill that right through all three of the pieces, the bunny and the two squares. I've decided to make it even more sturdy by taking the sign from the Dollar Tree. I took off the rope and the staples and then I'm gonna take some hot glue and just place that right in the center of this little plaque sign. This is gonna allow it to be able to stand up and we're gonna to get to decorate it towards the end because why not embellish a little more? So I'm gonna take my staple gun at this point and staple into the bottom so that the sign sticks to those little squares. We're gonna go ahead and take some of this paint and paint. Now you can see here, I have ran out of white paint, so I'm using house paint. I also picked up some of these butterflies a while ago and I have not used them all yet. So today what I'm doing is I took off the butterfly and I figured out how wide I need this wire to be because this is gonna be where our advent numbers are hanging down to count down the days in the month. And I'm just bending it so it's kind of almost like a football goal post like that because we're gonna poke those wires through the head of the bunny where the holes are that used to hold up the string on the original sign. Now we're gonna take this canvas, we're gonna cut out this canvas fabric because we're going to be using this for our sign. Make sure you hold on to the frame because we're going to be using that in another project just in a minute. And now I'm going to be taking that canvas fabric, I'm folding it in half the long way, I'm folding it in fourths, and I'm cutting and cutting. So you can see I have these long thin strips. And once I've got enough of those, I'm gonna go ahead and create a dovetail to them. I thought that was really cute to have a little dovetail cut at the bottom. And you can see that you're gonna need enough for your numbers. And I'm gonna do my very first number and that's gonna be my jump off point for my sizing. I wanna make sure that my sizing stays consistent all throughout me painting these numbers on. Now you could do them freehand like I'm doing if you feel comfortable. If not, you could always end up using a pencil first and then writing it on. So what you're gonna need are two zeros, two ones, two twos, two threes, and then all of the numbers going up to nine after that are singles. I really had a lot of fun painting these numbers on. Now remember, everything, like I said, I'm pulling out from my stash is just things that I've had, 
and this bunny that we're making today is made with the most random things that I found. I was just going through all of my stash thinking, hey, I could turn that into something and I got enough supplies and now I'm making a bunny. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our number flags, we're gonna fold a little flap and then create two circles at the top. When you open that up, you're gonna see here that I have two circles that we're gonna be able to hook on some rings on it to be able to hang it up over the bunny's head. Now to make sure your spacing is right and your numbers still stay consistent and you don't cut your holes wrong, take that first one as a template and then you're just gonna keep cutting all the holes and repeating the process through all of your numbers. Once you have all of your numbers cut out and everything's good to go, you then can start hooking them on. Now these hooks, I had these inside of my office supplies forever and I thought, wait, I can use those to hang up my signs. If you don't have these ring hooks, you can always use some twine to hang them up on the little metal wire, but I just thought this was so cute and made it look very farmhouse. I don't know, I really thought it was adorable. I'm super excited about it. Now you can see here that the numbers are just gonna slide off. So what I did was I took some more of my rope and I wrapped it around on the two ends and the middle and I went around several times to create a little bit of a knotted up feel to it and again it looks farmhouse. So I'm going to take my popsicle stick and you can see I fray the ends and then I just take that and press it all down to make sure it's nice and smooth and held in place. And then to reinforce it I have this trick with hot glue where I like to put a little bit over the surface to seal it and then if while it's still hot you can just smooth it out and it goes clear and you don't even notice it. As it starts to dry, if you try to, the hot glue will turn white and you'll notice it. So just make sure you move quick if you do that tip. Now you can see here that those little knots are gonna be able to hold up my numbers and I'm gonna take them and poke my wire through those two original holes on that bunny head. I'm gonna bend the wire back. Now you want to be careful when you're doing this. This wire is very strong from these butterfly garden stems and they're really tricky to bend. So make sure you take your time so you don't destroy your bunny or <laughs> cause any problems when you're trying to bend the wire. So you can see here that I was struggling just a little bit because it's such a thick wire, but that's a good thing. You want this wire to be thick so it doesn't bend real easily and break after time. So I'm going, I bent it back once I'm coming around that pole and then I'm going back around and down on the other side of the bunny's ear. And once you get it down over there, you don't want the wires to be sticking up and out. They can hurt somebody, so make sure you grab the ends and curl them down a little bit so that they're pushing into the actual sign. Now I want to distress a little bit so my bunny stands out and you can see the texture of that burlap even more pretty than you can even imagine. I added a really beautiful ticking stripe bow to it. If you need a tutorial on how to make bows, I have that. I'll link that down below and at the end of this video so you can see how I make my bows. But I'm going to just kind of zhuzh up the ribbon a little bit on the ends. I like to make sure that they look really ruffly and I, I actually like my ribbons to kind of stay in place versus letting the tails just kind of hang down and do what they want. So I'm just taking my time to glue those on and then here comes the end. We're gonna take some hot glue and some foam and we're gonna just cut it down to the sizes that we need and we're gonna glue those right on to the base of our bunny. And this is gonna be so cool because you can stick all kinds of florals or whatever you want down in here. You could even embellish with some moss but I'm gonna go with florals just because I think this will look more pretty. I don't know, this is just me. But I'm gonna go with some more purple and blues like you're seeing me do a lot here for my spring season DIYs and I'm just cutting them down to size that I need and playing around with them to make them look like they're wildflowers growing out in a field. And then to finish off that, I'm gonna add in some of these cream roses. Now remember those carrots at the beginning, I added some popsicle sticks to them and stuck them in the flowers.
If you're new and you're coming over to my channel from The Playlist or Yami, my name is Heidi Sambel and I post Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, I'm over on Instagram if you wanna come over and say hi over there too. I post a lot of my projects over there and it's a good place to be able to have a more one-on-one -on -one conversation with me over there and to tag me if you do any of the DIYs that I do here on my channel. Remember those canvases that we were using earlier? Well, we are now gonna take off the rest of that fabric that we cut and left over and we are going to go ahead and just leave the staples you don't even have to take those out in fact if some of them pull up from the corners make sure you staple them down just to keep them nice and strong but we're going to be using four of these canvas frame wood pieces and we're going to turn them into a storage tall basket that is very farmhouse inspired i was sitting there looking at these and thinking what can i turn this into that would be really cool and I thought, wait a second, I can make a really tall basket out of this. So I'm taking some popsicle sticks, I cut off the tips that are rounded, and I'm gluing them down first and then stapling them, as you can see, on each corner. And you're gonna have two in each corner. And then you're gonna take your next one and you're going to slide that on and you're going to lay it on its side and then start gluing the sticks in place again and stapling them and you can see that the end of the stick is at the end of the frames side you don't want it to be hanging over because we're going to be doubling up to go to the next layer so as you've got all of those glued together it should look like a little box at this point you're then going to add in some more sticks and some more hot glue and some more staples and you're going to continue to go all the way around and once you've got that one done then you're going to get your next frame and you're going to add on to it once again so you're going to just slide that right on you're going to hot glue things down into place and staple them into place and we're going to do this like i said four times until you get all the way out now you can do this as short or as tall as you'd like but it's just cool to see what you can do with these frames and with popsicle sticks so once i've gotten to the last one you can see i have all four of them together here i'm now going to add in chicken wire now you don't have to do chicken wire but i thought this would be so cool and i picked up some chicken wire a while back because i have some diys that i want to do but here's the trick about chicken wire it is really hard to work with i'm not going to lie to you all it has a tendency to want to curl up just like you saw here so i will recommend if you've never used chicken wire before and you want to try it i recommend having somebody to stand by as you're getting the right spacing and bending it so my husband's hands are in the shot making sure that it's not giving me a hard time and reaching back and scratching my hand so so what I'm doing is I'm gonna insert this chicken wire inside of my wood frame that I just created. So I'm cutting off any extra that I don't need and I'm gonna be bending the sides to create the box itself. Once you've got all of the sides bent to the actual length that you need to fit through nice and snug, you're then going to take the ends and you're going to turn down the wire ends and curl them around and pinch them in place. And you're gonna see me do it here just in a second because you don't wanna have any wires that are loose. So here you can see that I've created my frame of the box and I'm just taking them and curling them under and then I'm pinching them down to make sure they're nice and locked in that way so nothing can get scratched or ripped whatever you put inside of your little box now here's the thing I know that this one is more advanced but sometimes I like showing some things that are advanced because I want you all to see what your potential is you don't have to start with something so challenging you could decide to just do the box and put some fabric inside of it there's lots of different ways to do this but I wanted to show you all what you can do with these frames how these are all supplies from the Dollar Tree that I've just had sitting around and I'm just turning them into something super cool that people pay a ton of money for and it's just about having that creative idea of hey i wonder what i can make with this if i just keep pushing myself and my creativity so once i got my wire all inside and you can see that it's nice and snug i'm going around the frames and i'm stapling down the chicken wire to the frames so it's nice and secure and if you have any staples that don't go all the way in just take a little hammer and gently bang them into place 
Now we're gonna take this sign that I have not gotten around to use either, and I'm gonna cut this down to size so it can be the base of my box. And I'm just gonna score it with my knife and then go over an edge of something and snap it off. It, they break off really easy. And then I'm gonna take some more burlap. I'm gonna glue that onto it, cut off the extra that we don't want or need. And again here, burlap, has a tendency to let hot glue run through it so make sure you use a popsicle stick versus tapping it down with your hand and then I'm now going to just glue that to the bottom of my box so that I can create a nice end to it so things can actually be stored in it otherwise they'll just fall all the way through then I'm going to staple it all into place. Once that's nice and secure, I went ahead and whitewashed the basket at this point. Now I will say, I did have one regret. I wish that I had painted it on the inside of the basket before I put the chicken wire. I just got impatient and I really wanted to see it with the chicken wire. And once I put it in and stapled it in, I thought, oh, Heidi, come on, girl, you know better. You should have whitewashed the inside of it first, but oh well. Now, once things are inside of it, you won't even notice, but I noticed it. So if you make this, keep in mind, paint on the inside before you add chicken wire. Okay, and then I'm gonna just paint the bottom of it so it has a nice finished look to it. And on the top sides, I'm adding some rope. So I'm pinching rope together. I looped it through and pinched it together. And then I'm gonna take another piece because I thought this would look kind of unique and fun and pretty. I'm gonna take a thin piece of this rope. I just uncoiled the three that are on the ropes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna just wrap it around to give it a nice completed look on the rope. And then make sure you fray out the ends because I think that just looks so pretty. And it's just one of those little details that people love when they see. What did you all think of my three projects today? Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think, which one was your favorite, and which one you think you might try. Don't forget to check out that playlist linked in the description box below and check out Yami's channel. And until the next episode, bye friends.